It's time for the fluffy kittens and cuddly puppies to move over. There's another baby animal that will melt your heart with their cuteness. Highland cattle calves are among the cutest baby animals I've ever seen. Fluffy, cuddly, and just downright adorable. Before we begin, make sure to smash the like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos. Highland cattle are a breed of cow that originated in Scotland. The coat also gives the calves their fluffy appearance and makes them look so adorable. It's simply impossible to feel sad when you know these sweet creatures exist in the world. Highland cows are often known as the gentle giants of Scotland. With their long horns and flowing red locks, these iconic beasts are easily recognized, but how much do you really know about them? The Highland cow is the oldest registered breed of cattle in the world. They have distinctive horns and long, wavy, woolly coats that can be a range of colors, including red, ginger, black, dun, yellow, white, gray, tan, silver, and brindle. Highland cows are raised primarily for their meat, which is growing in popularity due to being lower in cholesterol than other forms of beef. These cattle are a hardy breed designed to withstand the conditions in the Scottish Highlands. Their long hair is actually an unusual double coat of hair. On the outside is the oily outer hair, the longest of any cattle breed, and it is covering a downy undercoat underneath. The bulls can weigh up to a whopping 800 kilograms and the cows up to 500 kilograms and their milk generally has a very high butterfat content. Their distinctive long hair keeps them warm in winter, covers protection from the brush and undergrowth, protects their eyes from flies and contributes to their stunning appearance which makes them so popular. The hair gets shorter in summer and is not as long when they are bred in southern climates. Having such long hair also means that they do not need to store the waste fat you find in some other breeds of cattle. Nobody is quite sure if these cows can actually see where they are going, but whether they have supervision or heightened other senses, they certainly manage to find what they are looking for, even with that long fringe, known as a Dawson blocking the way. During the 18th century, thousands and thousands of highland cattle grazed upon the forests and hills of Strathsby, and in the summer they were even taken up into the high quarries. Herdsmen stayed in temporary buildings in the hills, called shielings, to look after them, whilst their relatives had to stay at home to gather crops for their winter feeds. When they were fattened enough for market, the cattle were driven along the road through the mountains by a few miles each day. The markets were held in places like Falkirk, Creef and Carlisle, and buyers came all the way from England to pay good prices for what they called high-quality Scotch runts, so-called because the Highland cattle were smaller. At one market in the early 1800s, some 30,000 pounds changed hands, an absolute fortune by today's standards. They were so popular that cattle thieving was common and individuals could apply for a commission to set up an official watch, which farmers would pay to retrieve stolen stock. Rob Roy McGregor operated a watch and was also a cattle dealer and drover. While Highland cows today are mostly recognized for their distinctive red coats, once upon a time they were predominantly black. Queen Victoria is said to have commented on a trip to the Highlands that she preferred the red-colored cattle and in an effort to please the Queen, this resulted in selective breeding of the reddish color that we see most often today and the black color gradually declining over time. Originally, the breed was divided into two classes, the West Highlands or Kylo and the Highlander. The Kylos were raised on the western islands of Scotland and tended to be of smaller size. They had a higher percentage of black and brindle cattle than the mainland Highlanders. The size difference was probably due more to the severe climate and limited rations that the island cattle were subjected to rather than to any genetic variation between the classes. Today, all members of the breed are just called Highland. Originally, the breed was divided into two classes, the West Highlands, or Kylo, and the Highlander. They originated in the Highlands and the Outer Hebrides Islands of Scotland as early as the 6th century. These days, they can also be found across the south of Scotland and other parts of Europe, as well as in Australia and North and South America, too. Highland cattle can even be found foraging 10,000 feet up in the Andes. 
If you are seeking the Highland cow whilst visiting their country of origin, you may find yourself with more success if you ask the locals to point you in the direction of the hairy coos, as they are locally and affectionately known. Often, these striking beasts can be spotted in fields along the roadside all over the highlands, especially in places like the Cairngorms National Park or roaming free on the road itself across the northwest. Highland cows can be milked on a small scale. They will never make as much milk as a production milk cow, but enough for personal use. One cow can produce on average around two gallons per day. Their milk has an extremely high butterfat content, up to 10%, which some farmers may find appealing, but others have stated is an acquired taste. The Highland has much smaller teats than other breeds of cattle. Breeding for meat is why a lot of farmers keep the hairy coos. Their meat is lean but well marbled, normally rated as premium beef. Pure Highland beef comes at a price. Pure Highland beef commands a premium price due to its fine texture, succulent flavor, and high protein content. Numerous tests in Scotland have shown that Highland cattle meat is lower in both fat and cholesterol than even chicken. It also is high in iron. The Queen has a herd of Highland cattle and it is rumored to be the only kind of beef she will eat. Scottish beef farming is nothing like intensive cattle farming. The system prioritizes the welfare and well-being of its animals. Due to the grazing land being often unsuitable for growing alternative foods, not to mention the low temperature and high rainfall, Highland cattle farming is considered to be highly environmentally sustainable. The breed standards guidelines, which are used to ensure that the animals produced by a breeder are of the highest standard, includes direction on how to judge the animals in four main areas, the head, the neck, the back and body, and the hair. Criteria looked for includes natural horns, being wide between the eyes, short and straight legs, and wavy hair. The most noticeable difference between the two sexes is their horns. A bull's horns often grow forwards or even slightly downwards and have a much wider base, whereas a cow's face upwards and is longer and finer at the tip than a bull's horns. These fantastic beasts have a reputation for their fantastic temperament, not a moody cow in sight. They are known for being a very docile animal, never showing any aggression and are very low stress to keep and manage. Within their herds, they have a great understanding of their own social hierarchy and never fight. They also enjoy the company of humans, often approaching walkers seeking affection. They have even been kept as pets. Highlanders have been living alongside man for thousands of years, with the written record as far back as the year 1200 AD and archaeological finds that take them back to 1200 BC. In the earlier days, in winter, the cows would come into the home and their body heat helped warm the home. This had the added benefit of also keeping others from stealing them.